right, this is the first episode of RV Dream Makers. Well, there's a lot happened in the last year. Uh, starting last July, we purchased this truck to start our adventure. Then after purchasing the truck, we decided to start getting our house ready for sale. We sold a lot of possessions. We took possessions to the dump. We uh, upgraded the house. A lot of painting, a lot of fixing, a lot of time, a lot of money. <laughs> Uh, it was very, very time-consuming. So then, the beginning of May, we started, we put it up for sale on Zillow. It sold in 18 days. Uh, we had been looking at RVs all the previous year with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds trying to figure out which one we won. We finally found one in Marion, Illinois. Uh, I think they wanted 64000 for it. It was a Heartland Gateway. It was the, the kind that we had decided we wanted uh, by the layout and uh, just everything about it. Bath and a half, a bunk room, uh, the great layout in the kitchen, and that'll be on a, another video. We'll do a walk through. But anyway, so we ended up going through the process of inspections and stuff for the sale of the house and property, and finally got it done in. June at the end of June well before that let's go to your favorite thing that happened so we about the second week of June we decided to um, talk about purchasing our fifth wheel but we did not want to make a purchase until we had the money from the house being sold so, we ended up, um, you know, checking down in Marion, Illinois, and they dropped the price to $54,000. Well, we thought, oh my gosh, we, we, we got to act on this. Well, then, she was worried that thousands and thousands of people have been walking through, because we saw it last, the previous July, almost a year earlier, and it was a 19... So she started looking online and found 2020s for $49,995. Didn't make sense, but we called Camping World in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they said that Heartland gave them such a deal to sell, sell these models. First time ever Camping World's had them. And that's why the price is so low. They also said, well, you're gonna have to pay $2,000 for uh, freight and prep fees. So we looked some more and found another one in Indianapolis and pretty much started bidding between the two. Who was gonna give us the best deal? We wanted Indianapolis because it was a heck of a lot closer, only about three and a half hours. And they ended up coming down to 48.7, no fees. We're like, we put money down on it. We had set this up for two to three weeks. We had pictures and video that it was the correct model and everything we wanted, residential fridge, the, the good package, the higher end package, and it was. So we decided on June 22nd, we told them we are coming to do the walkthrough, 
and get the paperwork ready for us purchasing this the following Thursday, which would have been June 26th, I believe, 7th. June 27th, that Thursday. So, we drive all the way over to Indianapolis, and we get there, and we they're going to put a hitch in my truck, too. I ended up purchasing a hitch along with it. So, while they're doing that, then we sat and waited and waited and waited, bought some stuff in Camping World that we would need for it, and we go to see it finally after waiting two and a half hours, and as soon as we walk in, we realize it is not the one we purchased. It is a lower grade model, same same fifth wheel. It didn't have the, the uh, more ride steps. It did not have a residential fridge. It did not have the, the good seats in it. I mean, it was missing a lot of stuff that we wanted and then what we agreed on. So we went in, talked to the salesperson. They were all, they had sold ours to somebody else. They had gotten the numbers mixed up or something. So they got in there and for a half an hour they found one and said that it would be there by Monday morning. So when we come back Thursday after selling our house and going to South Dakota to get our new licenses, they said it would be there. So we uh, end up going back home and they put the wrong hitch in my truck by the way also I asked for an 18,000 pound hitch they gave me a 16,000 pound hitch so anyway we get back home and come to find out they also <laughs> took my ball hitch out and didn't replace it so I couldn't even move a trailer at home Meanwhile, on the way back home, my wife tried to get a hold of the general manager because she was so upset over how much we had planned on this and took our whole Saturday, drove three and a half hours there and back, and um, wait, pretty much wasted our whole day. So, we ended up... Um, she emailed the general manager of the whole uh, store about how unhappy we were with what went on. So, Tuesday, we, uh, well, actually back to Monday. Monday, I end up trying to find our trailer because they gave us new paperwork with our trailer that we were supposed to get shipped there. So I went on Camping World's website and typed in that stock number and it came up in Columbus, Ohio. So I called Columbus, Ohio and asked them about it. And they looked all over their lot. They did not have that. So he ended up finding it in Grand Rapids, Michigan. The first place we had ever called so I called up there and they go, yeah, it's sitting right here. Do you want to buy it? I go, I hope not. It's supposed to be going to Indianapolis for us to purchase. And it was supposed to be there today. Well, he gets off the phone and comes back and says, yes, my manager said we're supposed to get it ready for transport. He said, I'm off tomorrow on Tuesday, but I will get it all packaged up and ready for you. And they should be picking it up today, maybe tomorrow at the latest, and it should be shipped down in Indianapolis. So we're like, okay, we're good. So we go to sign the papers. Our money's going to be transferred that afternoon. So we start driving to South Dakota to get our driver's licenses. So we get to South Dakota. We spend the night get up the next morning, get our licenses, and we're headed across Iowa, heading toward Indianapolis, so we can Thursday morning at 8 a.m., we're supposed to pick up our fifth wheel. So, 
on the way over, I decide to call Indianapolis and see if it's there. Can't get a straight, can't get anybody to answer me. Can't find anybody, they can't find anybody to talk to who I was supposed to talk to. So I decide to call Grand Rapids, Michigan. <clears throat> I call them and get the same guy. And he says, I can't believe it, but it's still sitting here waiting for somebody to pick it up. And this is Wednesday. So, I'm not a happy camper at this point. I've been relatively calm the whole time until this point. Then I'm getting mad because we boarded our animals for this trip. We had, we were supposed to pick up our son from the airport on Thursday afternoon, not till three o'clock. So it gave us plenty of time in Illinois, not too far away from Indianapolis. So I call back to Camping World Indianapolis and finally get somebody to call me. They call me hours later and they're trying to explain to me that the uh, they're at the mercy of the transport people. So we end up getting to Indianapolis. We park right across the street. We stay at a hotel right across the street so you can walk over to camping. So the next morning, I get up early and I walk over there and I don't see anything. So I come back, get my truck for my 8 o'clock appointment because they're supposed to switch out the hitch and they're supposed to have our fifth wheel ready for us to walk through. Go over there. It's still sitting in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So, I'm really upset. And this service gal comes in and gets in my truck to take my truck back to service. I'm telling her story how we haven't even heard from the general manager that we emailed. And she goes, stop the truck. I stop the truck. She says, there he is right there. You get out and talk to him. I'm going to take your truck. So I get out, and I planned all along to kill him with kindness because you ain't going to get anywhere by getting all upset. I've learned that over the years. So I asked the general manager if we can talk in his office. I go in there. He listens to my whole story about everything from the beginning that has went, went wrong, how we still don't have a vehicle, uh, it's our home, by the way. We sold where we were homeless at the time. This was supposed to be our home. So anyway, we ended up, he listened to everything and then was totally sympathetic, understood, said, is there anything we can do for you? I said, I, I'm not, I made a deal. I said, I usually don't like going back on deals, but this was just... I mean, this was really bad business. And I said, well, if you can give us a, a wash, throw in a washer and dryer or do something monetary with the price, I don't care. Just, I feel like we deserve something for what went on. So he takes me out, tells the guy, as soon as your vehicle gets here, we're getting, putting a washer and dryer in. Uh, you're talking $1,500, you know. So that's, then he gives us a $100 gift card to the shop to buy stuff for everything we need. Ch chalks, and, uh, uh, a mat, and, uh, sewer hose, toiletry stuff, all kinds of stuff. So anyway, the fifth wheel finally shows up at 4 p.m. on Thursday evening. We have to arrange for the animals and the our son to be picked up and they take three hours to prep it and get it ready put the washer and dryer in and we leave at seven o'clock driving all the way home our first night was spent in six flags parking lot where i work in st louis on the other side in eureka missouri so because it was midnight we couldn't have pulled this down 
where we're going to park it. So that's the story of how we got it. Now, we've been staying there all through July, through August. It's August 31st today. And we're going on our first major trip, kind of like a test run. So we're headed to Colorado. We got it in tow. Uh, we got a nice bed for the dog here in the back. And my wife, who just won't shut up, <laughs> won't say anything. And that's where we're at so far. Headed to Colorado. We're going to get a real big test on this pulling this monster behind us it's it's gonna be a real test so in the mountains so there'll be more video of our hikes or where we're staying so hopefully you'll continue to <laughs> we're in Denver there you go <laughs> the very disgustingly buggy windshield hey near Samson got his face down by the AC It's 97 degrees. It's hotter here than it is at home. 